Okay. And what we have also, we have that thing like placebo effect. Placebo, from latent pleasure, is the pharmacologically inactive substance administrated to patients under the, uh, I don't know how you read that, <laughs> under the views or gears or views, I think, of a medicinal product. So that means I give you just something, for example, I don't know, sugar, tablet made of sugar. But I tell you, oh, this is a very effective medicine, the new medicine, it will absolutely treat you. And what happens that moment? The patient starts to believe that. And in case of pain, there is up to, not four, it's 40, mm, 40, 40, of course, from 40 to uh, eighty percent effectiveness from forty to eighty percent effectiveness. If the patient has bronchospasm, bronch uh, like in bronchial uh, asthma, from twenty to thirty percent effectiveness. In case of insomnia, thirty to sixty-five percent, and in angina pectoris, it's. Uh, pain in chest, you know, uh, the heart, heart pain, uh, from 15 to 35 percent. What does it mean, guys? That means that if patient only believes that his pain should be reduced, the pain is really reduced, and not only pain. Okay, it's clear with insomnia. Talking about insomnia, I understand that patient believes that he wants to sleep and he really falls asleep he stops uh, his anxiety maybe or he stops his uh, his thoughts about his future or past and finally he falls asleep but very interesting effect on bronchoconstriction for example yes so really the patient feels more uh, calm and uh, more comfortable and he he feels that okay it is easier to breathe really so the placebo effect can even help in that case and this is very interesting okay we can also classify medicines in different ways for example alphabetically it's not very um, Comfortable, actually. It's only for posting in drug formularies and different uh, dictionaries, you know, like that. Different lists of drugs and so on. Uh, chemical classification. Uh, drugs can be derivatives of different chemical structures. Uh, for example, benzocaine has that benzoyl ring in, in it. And some other drugs containing benzoyl ring can be also uh, brought to this group. But our interesting classification will be pharmacological classification. For example, by systems. Uh, cardiovascular drugs affecting on cardiovascular system, drugs affecting on CNS, and so on. Also by classes, antiarrhythmic, antihypertensive, and so on. So you see, yeah, cardiovascular drugs, they can be antiarrhythmic and they can be antihypertensive but of course effects are absolutely different but they all go to cardiovascular then by groups by groups uh, by mechanism i would say blockers of sodium channels for example beta blockers uh, maybe activators of potassium channels and so on so it means on which target in the cell do this drug effect this drugs effect um, also, we have pharmacotherapeutic classification. This is interesting. For example, for the treatment of peptic ulcer disease. For the treatment of peptic ulcer disease, we can have absolutely different drugs. For example, we can use antibio antibiotics. Uh, why antibiotics? Because there is a bacteria, Helicobacter pylori, which can cause the peptic ulcer disease. But not only that. Also, we can use the blockers of um, H potassium ATPase to reduce the uh, HCL in the stomach, the acidity in the stomach. Also, we can use some anticytes. 
also to reduce acidity and so on. Guys, even, even we can use some drugs affecting on CNS in that case because stress is actually a big problem in peptic ulcer disease. So you can see that in this pharmacotherapeutic classification, treatment of one disease can uh, include absolutely different various types of the drugs. Uh, so on, in bronchial asthma, the same, of course, different. And also how we name the drugs. We have various, um, how to say it, various ways of naming of the drugs. For example, chemical name. It describes the chemical structure of the drug. This you studied in um, organic chemistry. And uh, for example, pharmacy students, I'm sure that you know these uh, names very, very well. Uh, I'm not sure about general medicine and dentistry, but pharmacy, they study these chemical names during the whole period of education. So, for example, for example, yes, 242 methyl propyl phenyl uh, <laughs> phenyl propionic acid. R is missing here actually. And, um, and uh, nothing we can say about this drug because we just don't remember what is it and how it affects. So, this chemical is only for chemists, it's not for us as, a doc as doctors. Uh, so, next, international non -pro -prior, pro -prior, generic name, okay? Uh, generic name, it's the official name of the drug. It is not owned by any company. It is universally accepted, actually all over the world. Everybody in the world knows this drug name. And if you are in Russia or you are in India or you are in Egypt, in Iraq, doesn't matter. Anywhere, every doctor will know that name. For example, ibuprofen. Ibuprofen, everybody heard it because it's a worldwide spread drug name, ibuprofen. The same we can say about uh, acetylsalicylic acid and so on. Okay, next. The Brand name, trend name, trade name is the registered trademark of the drug company. Often it is easier to pronounce, not always, but we know that by a company which produces the drug. For example, Nurafen. Nurafen, I guess you also heard it, but actually Nurafen is ibuprofen. It is not another drug. It is just the trade name of this drug, which is registered by one company which produces this kind of ibuprofen. And what else we have here? Uh, two principles of the drug usage. Cantaria cantarius. <laughs> this is treating the opposite. It's the allopath principle. Allopathy is actually what we study in pharmacology. We study pharmacology because, um, okay, for example, if you know that you have inflammation, you use anti-inflammatory drugs. This is opposite. It's the treatment when you stop the process which you don't want to spread in the body. So this is our principle which we study here and which we use in our practice. But also, there is a principle of similis similibus, the homeopathy. Homeopath principle is the treatment of the same by the same. For example, for example, uh, homeopathy um, says that if you have um, what? If you have a cold, you should use the antibodies to your immune uh, system like interferons antibodies to interferons so you like you fight with your uh, immune system on that moment when you should use it for fighting of the cold or flu in this homeopathy principle they are using 
very, very, very small dose. I can say negligible dose, doses. And um, we don't study it in the course of pharmacology. Um, I think even that we don't study homeopathy in our university at all. Because this is considered to be not a science, but pseudoscience, and not all the scientific community confirms that homeopathy can work. So unfortunately, in our university, we don't study that. Uh, but if you are interested in that, you can study that yourself, of course. Uh, and here in the uh, <laughs> in the bottom of this uh, slide, you can see the enormous numbers which companies make on uh, producing uh, allopathic allopathic medicine, and <laughs> much less that companies do on producing the homeopathic medicines. Maybe this is the uh, <laughs> the problem why we don't study the homeopathy of course it's a joke uh, okay uh, so what are the international standards for the development of medicines this is good laboratory practice good manufacturing practice good clinical practice and investigation of new drug actually these are some principles which are studied in the um, course of pharmacy uh, because they give you the rules how the drug should be produced you will study them not in pharmacology here i'm just telling you that uh, drugs uh, they are not produced as you wish we have the world spread principles which should be maintained in the factories where the drugs are made and the evidence-based medicine also tells us how we should study the drug before releasing that in the market. And uh, we have different levels of evidentiary. The best, the best level is 1A level. It's when the drug has a well-designed, large, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies. That means that the drug is absolutely safe absolutely effective and you can use it for every patient with no doubts and that means the drug is the drug will be like a first line drug recommended for the treatment of this disease uh, then all these uh, classes below they have not that good uh, clinical trials or maybe you see second is small randomized controlled trials, case control studies or cohort studies, and some information in the reports of expert groups or consensus, consensus of specialists. So if one doctor observes the effect of one drug, that doesn't mean that this drug is really effective. If you can see this effect, that doesn't mean that it really has it, you know? <laughs> because to confirm the efficacy of the drug we should try it on many many people on thousands i can say of people okay not thousands but hundreds of people hundreds of people with different um how to say it like different uh, stages of control and only when we check it so many times we can say yes this drug is quite effective we will use it in our patients. So that is why we have this evidence-based medicine and we always try to follow it and we always try to administrate the drugs with the maximum possible, possibly high level of evidentiary. Okay, actually this is the end of uh, my presentation. I want to tell you thank you for your attention and with your teachers you will also uh, discuss this topic what is it pharmacology and all this and how to make recipes so see you on the next lecture on our course goodbye